continue our study through the book of Acts, and I don't know if I get everybody's hands shook today, but I sure tried to, amen. And uh, we're going we're gonna to be looking into the writings of Luke here this morning in Acts chapter 5. I'm going to start in verse 17. I've already, I've already taught down, I've already preached down to uh, verse 29. But for clarity this morning, we're going to back up to verse 17. And, and uh, we, we, uh, we're going to start right there this morning. And uh, I just want to mention that last week, now I, I can't get all the names all laid out like I used to. As a matter of fact, I never could. But, uh, but anyway, let, Hayes Allen Rickman came into the world last week. And uh, we, I forgot to mention that, amen. But uh, he came right on in, and he looks just like Lottie and, uh, when, he, when she was born. And so we know what he's going to look like, but he's going to be a man, I can tell you. He's already going to be taller. He came out long. And uh, anyway, just want to welcome them and, and, uh, <coughs> and all, and I know they're at home, and, and uh, <coughs> all the, uh, we got a lot of babies around here, amen? We still like one or two more. We'll have a baby dedication here before long, but I'll just go ahead and tell you the date we, we, we put that down, it will snow. <laughs> it will snow. I promise you, every time we, in February, we, January, February, we have a baby dedication, it snows. So it's going to be a white day, and uh, you just come be a part of that. It's going to be white on the ground and probably ice on the ground. But anyway, we're going to, we're going to do that here pretty soon. In Acts chapter 5 and verse 17, does anybody know what the theme of Acts is? Jesus went up. <coughs> Holy Spirit came down. Saved went out. And the lost came in. I'm already in trouble. I can't hardly talk. But we're going to get through this. Amen. It says in uh, verse, uh, verse 17 this morning, and uh, it, says in, it says, Then the high priest rose up, and all that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, <coughs> excuse me, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles, and put them in the common prison. And the angel of the Lord by night opened the, opened the prison doors, and brought forth, and said, Go stand to speak in the temple to all the people. Who are who, all the words of this life? Have we forgot how big God is? Amen. God's big, amen? amen. And He's powerful. And He gave the church power. I can tell you, the church is powerful. If you get down and you need some help, you don't need to run from the church, you need to run to the church, amen? amen. In verse 21, and when they had heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together. Uh, all the council of Sanhedrin and all the senate of the children of Israel and sent, uh, that sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety and the keeper standing outside before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple <coughs> excuse me, the captain of the temple is the, the uh, temple police. Amen? Now between the coffin and this microphone rolling, rolling off, we're going to have a long day. <coughs> Amen? I'll get patterned out here in a minute. And in, 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 in verse, uh, in verse uh, 23, let me go ahead and read that. And saying, the prison truly found to shut up with safety and the keeper standing outside the doors. When we had opened it, they found no man. But when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. In other words, they wondered what would the outcome be. But in verse 25, and then, they, then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. That's funny how God changes all that around, isn't he? They, they, instead of, hey, the keepers started being afraid of the people because of the people were so, they were, there were so many saved and so many converted that they didn't know how to act around that. In verse 27, <laughs> And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, verse 28, saying, Did not straightly we command you that you should not teach in this name? What's that name? The name of Jesus. 
And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. And, God, and the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be the prince and savior, for to give repentance to Israel and the forgiveness of sins. And we are all his witnesses of these things. And so also the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to them that obey him. And when they had heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they took counsel to slay them. Then, then stood there up, uh, stood, stood one up in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, and had it in reputation among the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space, and said unto them, You men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what, man, what, what you intend to do as touching these men, talking about the apostles. And before these days rose up, Theatus, Theatus, uh, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400, joined, him, joined themselves, who, who was slain, and all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. After this, man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of taxing and drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say to you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For this, it, for this council, for if this council or this work be of man, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest happily you be found fighting against God. And to him that, to, and to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and and, and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and to preach Jesus Christ. Let's pray today. Lord, we come to you this morning. Lord, because, Lord, there's nothing we can do without you. But, Lord, through you, all things are possible. And, Lord, there's, some, there's, here, there's people here today that needs a touch from you. They need, they, they need your touch. They need your word Lord, they need your encouragement today. And I pray, Lord, that they'll find it here through the power of your Holy Spirit today. And Lord, there may be some that, that are lost and Lord, they don't know you as Savior. And Lord, I thank you for the ones that you saved in recent days, even, even, uh, even in Sundays before and even on Wednesday night, Lord. And, but Lord, today there's people here that may not know you as Savior, that you'll save them today. Lord, that you'll change their, their, uh, their eternal life. And Lord, we lift that up into your hands today. And I pray for all those that's with our children in the back. Lord, some 75 or better kids back there. Lord, thank you for trusting us with your kids. And Lord, I pray for each and every person that's taking care of them back there today. And Lord, we just lift that up into your hands. But Lord, this, this church needs a touch from you today. They need a word from you. They need your presence. They need your, they need your love. And I pray that even right now, they'll sense, you working, they'll, work, they'll sense you working in their lives right now. Lord, we love you and we need you. And we call upon your name today. Be with those that are traveling today. Our people, people are still celebrating Christmas and New Year's. And Lord, that they're off in, a, in another state. Just protect them and get them home safely. And Lord, be with those, Lord, that... Uh, that maybe today they're sick. Lord, there's, there's others among us, Lord, that, are, that, that uh, just can't seem to get, can't seem to get their, their, their health straightened out. And I want to lift them up to you. Be with Barry today as he's preaching your word over at Liberty. Lord, be, be with uh, uh, Brother George, Lord, as he's up in Princeton preaching your word. Thank you, Lord, that you trust us to, to send out good men, good preachers here to preach your word. We thank you for that. And I pray that your hand will rest upon them today. But I ask you to lay your hand upon this place today. Lord, we need you. And we're gonna, everything we do is going to bring great honor and glory to yourself. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And amen. I want, I want to talk to you today about four things that I see in this text. And I'm, I'm primarily going to be in verses 29 through 42. But for a little bit of clarity, uh, Wednesday night we had an awesome service. Amen. 
And uh, you can learn a lot on Wednesday night, I can tell you. So Wednesday night is probably one of the best services we have. And I, I want to thank you all for being faithful in coming. But I, I, I can't re I can't re preach all that. And uh, you're gonna you that were here, you got a different, you got another perspective of that that's gonna help you to understand this today. But in clarity today, though, number one, I want you to know this this morning. Number one, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I don't know if you realize it or not, but there is none here righteous, no, not one. And the only way we are righteous is when Jesus declares us righteous by his blood. Amen. When you go back to verse, when you, when you go back to our text and you look in, in, in verse 20, it tells him after the angel of the Lord let them out of the temple and he said, go and stand and speak in the temple to, to the people all the words of this life. And when you get down and you re read verse 25 and it says, Then came one that told them, saying, Behold, the men who you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. That's awesome. They're standing in the temple and they're teaching in the temple. What had they been told? Do not preach in this name anymore. You know why they don't want them preaching in Jesus' name? Because Jesus' name is powerful. It's powerful, church. You look at the multitudes that's been saved over the years and under the name of Jesus, that, that is the most powerful name that's ever used under, under heaven. And, and in verse 28 this morning, it said, it said, saying, did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? Why? Because this name is all powerful. And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man blood upon us. Now, I want you to notice that today in verse 28. The, the, the Sanhedrin, here they are. Here they are. They said, you, you intend to bring this, man's, this man Jesus' blood upon us. I hate to tell them this, but Jesus already took care of that. His blood is, is the blood that he shed is for, for all. Amen. But also, I want them to know that Sanhedrin, the blood was on their hands. You know, at Sanhedrin, the Sadducee, the Sanhedrin, the Sadducee, Sadducees means to, it means to be righteous. It's abbreviated the righteous ones. These were all, these, these were all in the Sanhedrin, there were 71 of them, including the, including the high priest, and, and, and all these were priests, but not all priests were Sanhedrin. And, and, and they approached the apostles on their doctrine of the gospel of Jesus Christ in verse 28. They, they approached them about this, about this name Jesus. They, they actually said in verse 28, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and tend to bring this man's blood upon us. And they are rightfully so that Jesus did want to bring their blood upon them to save them, amen? Amen. So they actually prophesied the blood of Jesus. They just didn't know it. The problem is the Sanhedrin, the Sanhedrin were already guilty of the, blood, of the blood of Jesus Christ upon their hands. When you go back to Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost and you look in verse 22 and, and as Peter is preaching, he says, You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you. You, you all saw it. And you yourselves know. They know. They saw the miracles. They, they saw what, what, what God could do. And him being delivered, talking about him, that's, it's capitalized because it's talking about Jesus, him being delivered by the de determinate council. That is the Sanhedrin. And, you, and the foreknowledge of God, God ordained that. God came to die. Did you know that? And you have taken him by wicked hands. You have crucified and slain who God has raised up out of the grave, having loosed the pains of death for us, because it was not possible that he should be holding up. You could not keep Jesus in the grave. Amen. And in verse 36, it says, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly. I love that word, assuredly. It means, it means for certain. It means beyond all doubt. It says, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that, that God has made this same Jesus whom you have, cru have crucified, both the Lord and and Christ. He's Lord and God. Amen. Amen. He's God. 
that came to die on the cross for the sins of mankind. He, see, there's one God that came in three persons. Some people can't get that figured out. Have you got it figured out? No, but when I get to heaven, I'll see. There's one God that came in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. How come he came in three persons? Because he's God and he can. Have y'all forgot how big God is? Chris, you didn't know you was, te you was teaching my sermon this morning, did you? Can, do you know how powerful God is? Do you know how powerful that name is? In Acts 4.12, for there's no, no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There, there's only one name. And in Philippians chapter 2 and verses 10, it said, in 10, 10, 11, 12, right in there, it said, it said that the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess in heaven and earth and in hell. That's how powerful Jesus' name is today. Do you understand how powerful that name is? And listen, if his name's that powerful, he can handle our little old problems. Amen? Amen? So I want you to see that today, and I want you to know that the determinate council had, had it, by the four odds of God, they, they had crucified God and the Messiah. They had crucified him. And, 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 and in, when you look in, in Acts chapter 5 and look at verse 28, he said, he, and it says, saying, Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name of Jesus? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and, and, and intend to bring this man blood upon us. And in verse 29, he says this, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. Then Peter starts preaching right here. Oh, Peter, he didn't take him much to preach. He said, then he said, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus who you slew and hanged on a tree. You put him on the cross. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be the prince, capitalized, and a savior, capitalized, for to give repentance to Israel and the forgiveness of sins. That's what he came to do. And he said, we are his witnesses. That he, now, uh, here, here they are, Peter, here, Peter's preaching, and, and, and Luke here is writing, and, and, and you see right here, he said, we are all witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to them, obey him. See, the Holy Spirit of God should bear witness with that when you're saved. But in verse 33, when they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Hey, they, hey listen. Conviction will cut you in the heart. Church, we have all sinned. Even these Sanhedrin, these Sadducees, which means to be righteous, these righteous, to be righteous priests, they're, they're sinners too. Did you know that? All have sinned. In Romans chapter 3 and in verse 10, it says, For it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understands. There's none that seeks after God. See, God seeks us. Amen? And they're all turned aside. They're all turned out of the way. They are together become unprofitable, worthless, of, of no value. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. And you get down to verse 26, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all missed the mark this morning. And we've all come short of the glory of God. But I, I want you to know this morning, this Sanhedrin, as righteous as they thought they were, they needed Jesus just like everybody else. Amen. And you know, Jesus died on that cross for them too. Do you know that? We kind of look at the Sadducees and Pharisees. I mean, let's just be honest about it. Some of you men, I know you men, would you just like to whip them? But God died for them too. Amen? And we forget that. <laughs> Number two this morning. The gospel of Jesus Christ overcomes our guilty sin. Look down with me in verse 20. Let's go back to verse 20. And it says, he, he tells him, go stand and speak in the temple to the, to, to the people all the words of life. What's the words of life? That is the gospel message. In Romans 1, 16, Paul writes, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and to salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. There is none other name that's more powerful than that. And that gospel will change people's lives. 
And not only the gospel. Matter of fact, the text that I was in in Romans chapter 3, I read verse 23 where they all sin and come short of the glory of God. But, but in verse 24, it says this, being justified, being declared righteous freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. See, we're redeemed by him. Not by what we do. It's about what he did. And it's free. Therefore, not only we can be saved by God's, God's grace, we can live by God's grace. I live by God's grace every day. Every day I live by God's grace. Y'all ever have a day that you just, you were having a, just a day that you were close to the Lord and, and you, you had sought him out. Hey, he, he just seemed like he just sat out with you and you had a, and, and even all during that day and then the next day, you're thinking, Who, where's that guy that was with where was that guy? It was yesterday. Today I'm having a hard day. Y'all know what that is? That's because we still got Adam's body. I'm just glad God has redeemed me by his grace and not anything I can do. I, I, you can feel righteous one day, but the next day you, you may feel deadly. The problem is, is we still got Adam's body. But praise God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God for grace. Do you know grace? Grace to take care of all of it. Grace to take care of any sin. Any sin. I know there's people sitting here today and I want you to know that, that there's not a sin that Jesus can't forgive except one and that's the continual rejection that you do not want him as Savior. But he'll forgive all your sin. It says in verse 25 of Romans 3, 25, whom God has sent for to be a propitiation, a substitute through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Let me tell you something, church. God is enough to forgive you of your sin, of any kind of sin and any kind of shame. What, what we need to understand is we need to let go and let God forgive that and quit holding on to that sin. Quit holding on to that struggle. Quit holding on to the past. Amen? Amen? So I want you to know this morning that the gospel of Jesus Christ overcomes our guilty sin and they're preaching this in the book of Acts and we're preaching it today in the book of Acts. Acts is still going on today. It's the Acts of the Holy Spirit through the apostles. And that will end when Jesus comes back again and he raptures out his church. The church age that we're in right now, the book of Acts is the church age. It will quit when Jesus comes back again. We're in a church age and God hadn't changed his mind Amen. about his gospel. See, we got churches today that they're, they're bored with the gospel. They try to fill it with programs that, that, that are maybe catchy and maybe you have to do, maybe, maybe you know, God don't need a program he just needs obedient people. Amen. Amen. You don't substitute the gospel of Jesus Christ and the power of God's name, Jesus. You don't substitute that with things that are catchy. The power of Jesus Christ can handle that all. Right. Amen. Those little kids that's back there, your little kids, they're being taught how to praise God. They're getting to, being taught how to, how to pray. They're, be, they're being taught the books of the Bible. I don't know what age is it, but every, every age, there's three, different, there's three different services going on back there for your children today, and every one of them is on their, on their age group. But it's all about Jesus today. Amen. And nothing else. It's about Jesus. See, Jesus is what, Jesus will change your life. He'll change your life. And he's enough. Amen. He's enough. When I was at Trace Creek, I helped Brother Ronnie. I, I, people would be baptized. I'd go back up into that room and I'd help people get ready, much like Rick Hill does and some of the others. Matter of fact, we need more people to help do that. Don't rush and do that. But we listen, I used to go back there and I'd help people get ready and I'd help Brother Ronnie get ready at one time. There was a young man that grew up hard and he, he grew up by what he saw in his household. Y'all know what I'm talking about? 
was, he, 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 was, he was violent. But God saved him by grace. Amen. And he was a felon. As a matter of fact, the, one, the very one that arrested him got saved during the same time and he was in the same room getting ready to be baptized with him in the same water. Amen. So you got a convicted felon and I'm going to tell you, he was bad. For some reason, he liked me. And I'm glad he did. <laughs> Amen? That young man's already passed away. But you know, here, here, here's the arresting officer. He's been saved, and then God called him to preach, and he's pastoring a church today. Thank God good. And they're both in there together, and Brother Ronnie and me, we kind of look at one another like, how's this going to go down? I don't know which one, both of them. The officer was quiet. He wasn't. And I thought, how's this going to go down? It wasn't much. There was just a couple, one sentence said from this young man that was arrested. He looked over at him and said one thing. And that guy said one thing, and they hugged. Amen. Then they baptized both of them. Amen. How does that work? It's by the grace of God. Both of those men needed Jesus. Their families need Jesus. One of them's preaching the gospel today and he's, 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 he's winning souls. His church is growing. That's a good day, church. Amen. What about that young man? He's in heaven. He don't have to walk around with a chip on his shoulder anymore. All that sin's gone. And you know, there's people going to be in heaven if, they, if, they, if they'd had their right mind in here and if they can look back and think, boy, I didn't think you'd ever get here. That's what they'd tell him. But praise God, we're going to have a new mind. We're going to know everybody. We're not going to know each other's past. We're not going to know, we're not going to know, we're just going to know people. Hello, Elijah. Hello, Abraham. What are you doing here? And it, not, nobody says that. <laughs> if they do, you're in the wrong place. You better get out of there. <laughs> Amen? Because they know, they remember. Y'all with me this morning? Let me say this, number three this morning. Not only that the gospel of Jesus Christ overcomes guilty sin, but number three this morning, God's work cannot be destroyed and man's work will be destroyed. If it's work of God, you can't, you can't put it out. If it's man's work, it will, it will not last. Look down with me in verse 32 this morning, and, and it says this, and we are all witnesses of these things. All these apostles, they witnessed who Jesus was. He, hey, hey they, they've been there since the beginning. And so is also the Holy Ghost whom, whom God has given to them that obey him. Now look at verse 33. And when they had heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay him. I want you to know that these God-called apostles' work is accomplished through the Holy Spirit and nothing else. Everything that's birthed off in the Spirit will remain in the Spirit. They were told not to preach in that name, but they preached in that name, and here they are. Now the Sadducees, they're cut to the heart. They're really under conviction. You know, people are usually mad before they get saved sometimes. Paul was mad. He was exceedingly mad. But who, who showed up on the road to Damascus in Acts chapter 9? Jesus did. And he saved him by grace and he called him to be apostles to the Gentiles. But I want you to know that that's God's work. And you get down to verse 34. Now, now here, here is a non-believer, but, but he was a teacher of the law and he, was, he had great reputation in verse 34. Then stood there up one in the council, the Sanhedrin, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law had in reputation among the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little bit of space. So here comes Gamaliel. He comes up. They're, they're, about, to, they're, about, they're about to grab a hold of them apostles. He comes right in. Everybody knows who Gamaliel is. 
And he walks in. He's a teacher of the law. He's notoriety. He's got age on him. And he comes in and says, hey, y'all back off just a little bit. Now, why did he do that? Because he's a believer? No. He was older. And he had seen some things. And, and, and when you look at that this morning, here, Gamaliel, let me just give you a little background. Gamaliel, Gamaliel his grandfather was a prominent rabbi, Hillel. Anyway, Gamaliel, according to one of the writers, one of my favorite writers is David Jeremiah, he said this, Gamaliel was the chief exponent and disciple of the Hillel school of the Sanhedrin. He was a highly regarded teacher who was noted for his liberal attitude. See, see, the Sanhedrin were liberals and the Pharisees were legalistic. They were both lost. Amen. However, Gamaliel's most famous student was Saul of Tarsus, who was saved and called to be an apostle on the road to Damascus in Acts chapter 9. And then after he was called to be an apostle, he, he changed his name to Paul. So that's who Gamaliel is, amen? I mean, he's the president. He's the, he's the big dog. But he had seen enough, Gamaliel had seen enough religious flair and flare-ups that fizzled out to know if Christianity was not of God, then it would fail. When you look at verses 35, and he says, and he said unto them, you men of Israel, take heed. This is still Gamaliel talking. Take heed to yourselves that what you intend to do is touching these men, the apostles. Y'all with me? For before these days rose up Theatus, boasting himself to be somebody in the ministry, to whom a number of men, about 400 joined themselves who was slain and all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. So, so here, here, is a, here in verse 30, 36 you see a failed work. A, a false teacher has rose up and Gamaliel has seen that. You look at verse 37 and after this man rose up Judas of Galilee. That's not Judas of Iscariot. It was Judas of Galilee in the days of taxing and drew away much people after him. He also perished and all, even as many obeyed him, they were all dispersed, they were all scattered. So here is another work that has failed because it was not of God. Y'all with me? Amen. And I want you to know today that God is going to try every work. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, you don't have to turn there, but I'm going to read a few verses, and it says this in verse 11. It says, For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. See, a church, a ministry, must be founded upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. Or, there's no, or it's not a ministry. And it says in verse 12, Now if any man build upon the foundation... Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, any kind of earthly temporary things. Every man's work shall be made manifest. It's going to be brought to light for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. There's going to be a refiner's fire of what sort it is. It says, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. You know, I really believe each church will be tried. I believe every teacher will be tried. I believe every preacher will be tried. I believe every self-professed Christian and the works that they do in ministry will be tried by fire of what sort it is or what kind it is or where it came from. And in verse 38 of our text today, it says, And, and now I say to you, refrain from these men. Gamaliel still talking. And let them alone, for this, for, for if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. It will, it will stop. It will cease. 
And then in verse 39, it says, but if, God, but if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest happily you found even to fight against God. So I, I could tell you today, in verse 38, if it's a work of man, it will come to nothing, it will cease. And in verse 39, and if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest you be found to even fight against God. Church, God can and will use the credibility of of people like Gamaliel, he was a non-believer to make his point. I mean, just think of who he was talking to. He was talking to fellow Jews, fellow constituents, fellow students, and guess what? They listened to him. God's smart, isn't he? Smart to use him. And in verse 40, in verse 40 it says, and, and to him they agreed. They agreed to Gamaliel, and when they had called the apostles, they had beaten them. That's not very exciting, is it? And they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and, then, and let them go. They told them again, don't speak in that name anymore. Church, God is going to try our work today. He's going to try my work. He's going to try every work. He's going to bring it all to light. If it's real or if it's hip hop, hip hypocritical, he's going to show it. Y'all believe that today? You know, the sad day would be that one day this church ceased. That would be pretty alarming, wouldn't it? But this church was birthed off of another church. This church didn't come off a church split. Y'all understand it? Do you know there's a big difference? You split the body of Christ, that, hey, that's not a good day. It'll fizzle a while, it'll go up a while, it'll go down a while. It'll go up a while, you'll get down to where there's a few people left. But when God bursts off something, then he's responsible for it. And when God builds something, it will be strong. And when God raises up a work, it'll be his work. We got to be careful to not call something we think's God's work God's work when it's not God's work. Anybody home? I want you to see something else this morning. In verse 41, they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer for shame for his name. Do you know a lot of people quit right there today? Verse 40, 42, and they were daily in the temple, every house, they ceased not to teach and to preach Christ. You go back to verse 40, it says, and they beaten them and commanded them that they should not speak in the name of Jesus, and they let them go. If it's of God, I want you to hear this. If it's of God, it's going to be challenged. And through the fire, the refiner's fire. Y'all know what a refiner's fire is? When they melt gold and they melt it all together, what comes out of the melting of the gold is the impurities that come out. And they remove the impurities and they just have the gold and they let it cool off and you just got just the gold without any kind of impurities in it. That's what God does to ministry. That's what God does to his work. If it's of God, it's going to last. It don't mean there's not going to be any kind of fire coming because fire is going to come. As a matter of fact, there's going to be persecution coming if it's of God. Some of you are thinking, I haven't been ever being persecuted. Well, you're not in the ministry. You're in the world. Because when you're in the ministry, I'm not talking about being a prayer. I'm talking about when you're in, when you're in with God and you're in the battle and you're in the war with him, there's going to be persecution come. 
Some of you are thinking, boy, I, I'm, I don't want to be a part of that. Exactly. And God's going to show that. What's real and what's not. It says over in Matthew chapter 5, in verse, in verse 9, it's, in verse 10 it says, Blessed are they, Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount, in verse 10, Blessed are they which are persecuted of, for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are, are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner evil against you falsely for my sake, for Jesus' sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, and so persecuted they the prophets which went before you. If you're in Jesus, you're really in Jesus, you're going to be persecuted. You're going to be talked about. You're going to be slammed. In John 15, 20, Jesus said, Remember the word that I said unto you. He's talking to his disciples. He's talking to us. He said, Remember the word I said to you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep, keep yours all on also. And when you look in verse 41 today of our text, and it says, And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer for the, name of his, for the, for the shame of his name. Do, are you rejoicing in that today? And in verse 42, it says, Daily in the temple, every house, they cease not. They never quit to teach and to preach in Jesus Christ. I love those two, verse 41, they were counted worthy. Verse 42, they ceased not. They never ceased. I want to say this, that God's work is proven by God's proven servants. Let me ask you something. When it gets tough in the ministry, and it gets tougher, what are you going to do? Are you going to stay in or are you going to bail out? God already knows. John Mark bailed out. He went home. But he had an encourager named Barnabas, his cousin, that went and got him and, and helped him get back into the ministry. Sometimes the road gets tough, church. But there's always an encourager around that'll help you find your way back. And there's a real encourager named Jesus Christ that'll help you get back to where you need to be today. I say all that to say this. Some of you hadn't been here that long. But over the past three years, this church has gone through the trial. It's gone through the fire. But it's remained strong because it's in the spirit and not in the flesh. The flesh has rose up against it. I always go back. To Matthew chapter 16, when Jesus told Peter, Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That don't mean it's not going to rise up against it. Because hell is standing at the door going to rise up against the church. And if it gets in the church, that's where it gets tough. The rock of Jesus Christ, the foundation is Jesus Christ today. Everything that we do, Sunday school ministry, Bible study ministry, you preachers that go out and preach, every different, maybe, maybe the different Bible studies are here, every one of them are going to be tried by fire. Because God's going to make us more like him every day. And I want to say that God has got his hands full with me. <laughs> Amen. And he does. Here's the moral of the story. If it's of God, it's going to last. 
if it's not of God, it's going to cease. What are you going to do with that? There's ministries outside. Hey, this, this church sponsors a lot of ministries. And those ministries, we make sure those are of God. And you vote on them every year when we pass our budget. And those ministries are strong out there because they're ordained of God and the people stay in. Can you imagine being down in the Philippines trying to pastor pastors that are losing their life for the cause of Christ down in the Philippines? Why would we not support that? Hey, we take a little ridicule here and you quit. What's going to happen when it gets here? God knows the real from the unreal. And God's going to try it. Some of you have been, y'all know what I'm talking about. There's a few here today that wants to jump and shout for joy. To know God's not mad at them. They're just in the fire being refined. Anybody home? There's a few here today like jump up. Thank you. God's not done with me. He's just making me stronger. He's making me more like him every day. And that's not going to end. Listen, that sanctification process is not going to end until we get to heaven. I don't know about you. I think I just need more Jesus. Maybe you do today. You know what? God may be knocking on some of your heart's door today to be saved. I mean, you know God's been dealing with you. If he hasn't been dealing with you, you know. Brother Keith, I don't know if he's been dealing with me or not. He has not. Because when God is dealing with you, you, you will know. Amen? Amen that. And that's the time to do business with him. And that's a good day. That the God of this universe that made the heavens and the earth and made all the sand on the beach, you go there and pick up one little grain of sand, he made that, and that's what we are, a little old grain of sand, and he's dealing with that little grain of sand. That's a good day. Because he wants you to get some things lined out with him. That's how good God is. Amen? Amen. There's none that seeks after God. He seeks us. I'm so glad he sought me out. I wasn't looking for him. I, I'll be honest with you. I was looking for girls. I mean, I know it's not very holy, but that's, that's what I was looking for at age 16. But God was looking for me. And God knocked on my heart's door. And I ran for a lot of years. But you know, God always, he's faithful. He's faithful. He'll chase you down. Some of you've got husbands that's wayward. Don't, you just keep praying for them. You just let God make them miserable as they can be. Amen. Amen. Some of you've got wives that, that's not faithful. And you, oh Lord, pray for them. Just keep praying for them. You get other people praying for them. There'll be a day God will chase them down. It'll be a good day. Amen. Amen. Maybe that's today. Just don't give up. Don't give up. Let's pray today. Lord, I, I feel like this church is...